CT perfusion is a growing and important imaging modality for acute strokes. CT perfusion is helpful in the management decision, especially when the exact timing of onset is not known. CT perfusion can aid in the differentiation between ischemic brain tissue with irreversible and reversible damages. Brain tissue with irreversible damages is termed the infarct core or simply core, and brain tissue with reversible damages is termed the penumbra. The size of the penumbra is especially important since this is the brain tissue that we can still save with reperfusion, either with thrombolysis and or thrombectomy. The difference between the core and penumbra is often termed the mismatch, and the bigger the mismatch, the more tissue is still viable. To begin, we inject contrast into the patient's peripheral vein. The contrast then moves with the circulation into the intracranial arteries, where it enters the brain tissue and then drains away through the veins. This travel contrast can be measured with multiple images acquired over time and measurement made by measuring the change in density in each area of brain tissue. This is often described with this graph, and these measurements will give us four important parameters. Cerebral blood flow, cerebral blood volume, time to peak, and mean transit time. Now let's try to correlate the graph with one area of brain tissue. First the blood will move in through the artery to the brain with a certain speed or flow termed the cerebral blood flow. This blood flow will enter the brain tissue and fill up to a certain volume, termed the cerebral blood volume. The blood volume will reach a maximum point before it drains away, and the time it takes to reach this maximum volume is termed the time to peak. Blood will spend a certain amount of time within this volume of brain tissue before it drains away. The time the blood spends here is termed the mean transit time. Okay, so we understand these parameters, but we need to apply them to estimate the penumbra and ischemic core. To understand these changes, we will look at the, how the brain reacts when it's not receiving enough blood flow. We will start with the baseline mean transit time, cerebral blood volume and cerebral blood flow in the normal brain. In the early process, the outer regulatory vasodilation increases the MTT and the blood volume while maintaining normal blood flow. As the blood volume peaks and the blood flow starts to decrease below the limit of autoregulation, the brain tissue becomes hypoperfused. This can be compensated with increased cerebral perfusion pressure, which is sufficient for the metabolic demand, and thus termed benign oligemia since no clinical symptoms are observed. As the blood flow lowers even more, the blood volume starts to come down from its peak and mean transit time continues to increase. At this moment, the metabolic demand is no longer met and clinical symptoms become apparent. The tissue is at risk for permanent damage, but is still viable if early treatment is initiated, so-called penumbra. With even further progression, the blood volume and blood flow is lowered significantly and the brain tissue is no longer viable and becomes the ischemic core. When we perform the imaging with CT perfusion, the patient will have clinical symptoms. So we are only trying to differentiate between the penumbra and ischemic core. So this graph can be simplified to this. For both the penumbra and the infarct core, the mean transit time is increased and cerebral blood flow decreased. However, the cerebral blood volume is often near normal for the penumbra, but is decreased for the ischemic core. Now let's look at how we can apply these principles when reading the CT perfusion scan. In this scan, we first look at the MTT or TTP, as both of those are increased in the suspected ischemic area. Next, I usually look at the cerebral blood volume to quickly estimate if there's a match or not, which would indicate an ischemic core if the match is near perfect. In the same area, the cerebral blood flow is slightly decreased. This indicates a large penumbra and is likely that this patient would benefit from reperfusion therapy. Let's compare it to this scan. Just like before, we have a large area of increased MTT and TTP. However, in this scan, there is almost a perfect match with the cerebral blood volume and the cerebral blood flow. This indicates a very large ischemic core and this patient would not benefit from reperfusion therapy. I hope this clears up the use and approach to CT perfusion, but remember that artifacts and other errors can easily occur with the acquisition and process of these images, and therefore always keep in mind the non-enhanced CT when you read through these images. As always, like and subscribe if you like to see more content.